So hello everyone, welcome back to Near Gestalt with your host, the Super Blue Badger. I have consumed a can of Monster Energy for the first time because I'm going to need it to keep me awake. Fortunately, we're already at the, for the Forest of Mist, or text as I have so lovingly dubbed it, and uh, we may as well just go inside and get it all over with as fast as possible. Are you with me on that one? This is the village from the dream. Yeah. Truly a nightmare I hope never to experience again. I hear you. Can it really be considered good de game design where your own characters are bashing it for being completely out there and absolutely insane? Just not really insane, but just so dreadfully boring. Oh well, I like the text anyway. I mean, ugh, I don't really have anything important to say about it. It's text. What else are you going to say about it? Ah. Oh, hello there. Hi there. How are things? Huh? You want to know if anything unusual is happening? Well, I have been feeling a rather strange presence so whenever I visit the Divine Tree. The Divine Tree? Yeah, it's the legendary tree that exists in the heart of our village. Did you investigate the cause of this... presence? Uh, not really, no. And why not? Well, we're not... We're not really supposed to go near the tree, except for prayer. And why is that? Vice obviously being a bit short because he's done with adolescent rules. Oh well. I don't know, alright? It's just the way things have always been. Weird. You said it, Nia. Unfortunately, as we approach this tree, we are pretty much forced to complete a side quest I picked up earlier, so uh, let's just get this over with, shall we? Everything seems normal here. We appear to have hit a dead end. Hold on a moment, what is that on the ground? Just some funny looking berries. I'd wager those berries are poisonous. Maybe, but I'm not hungry enough to find out. Yep, let's just completely disregard this, there's nothing more to say. So let's just continue on with the great divine tree and terribly pixelated grass. Or oh, poorly rendered grass. We are the grass. We are the trees. We are the woods. Why do we seem to encounter nothing but odd people lately? You should talk, Vice. Pa! As if a grimoire Vice is capable of spouting such nonsense. Hang on, I don't think he's done. The dark form that governs all memories. May the words form themselves to your liking. That would be nice. Black. Pure darkness. Painted over everything. Words. Scattered here and there, across the blackness. Kind words, difficult words, amorous words, all sparkling in the dark like jewels. The words were few now, but time was shorter. Grabbing the words in desperation, the tree turned to the sky. This is wrong, whispered the tree in the voice of the wind through the leaves. This is not how it is supposed to be. The plan failed. Once, long ago, the tree had remembered everything about the world. This was its task. Its purpose. It shivered with something approaching joy as it collected the memories of mankind. This was no accident. Emotions were as much a part of the tree as root and bark. Memories collected like dew, dew on the thick green leaves of the tree and once they had formed a web that spanned the entire world. Words collapsed into sunlight before passing through the leaves and into the pool of memory. From the pool, the words joined together to form colonies. The colonies united into whirlpools of light and light co coalesced... I can't say that word. Coalesced into stars. Each star was like a child of the tree, and it loved them all. Look at my memory. A child is here, brought low by disease. He is far too young to have suffered so. 
thin beyond words. The boy's skin is a shade paler than the bleached hospital, sh hospital sheet upon which he lies. His parents no longer visit him, for they cannot bear to watch him suffer. The doctors have long since surrendered his fate to the gods. The boy, too, has abandoned hope. Strange emotions. Weariness. Hatred. Swell within the dark recesses of his young heart. He tries to reject the black terror that germinates in his body. But no amount of effort or tears can drive the invader away. He has long ceased to resent his parents and doctors. Once he did, but now his pain is so great that there is little room in his heart to think of others. Only one person brings the boy comfort. A healthy young girl with tan skin and deep brown eyes. She is a beacon of brightness and light in the boy's world. Her very presence is a comfort to him. But he is unable to look upon her face. Whenever they meet, the boy is filled with loathing for his own state. Soon, this loathing eats away at what joy he receives from the girl's visits. The girl will stop coming. He knows this. His every waking moment is spent in fear of this day. He thinks that if he could talk to her, if he could tell of his, her of his feelings, that this might not be so. But this conversation never happens. The girl disappears. The boy dies alone. The tree scoops up this memory and carefully stores it within itself. Etched upon it is a single word. Envy. Look at my memory. There is a female warrior. Her greatest enemy is a beast with red eyes that she cannot fully comprehend. When she strikes it with her sword, it turns into a pillar of salt and dies. But when the white smoke clears, a new enemy rises. And another. And another. The warrior knows that her struggle is folly, but fighting the unending stream of enemies fills her with a sense of joy and purpose. Somewhere deep in the warrior's drug-addled mind lies a vague memory of a daughter. Perhaps the child only exists in her head, the dying remnants of a powerful dream she does not know. Her friends and fellow warriors come and go, some flee in terror, and some are eaten. She begun the flight with 63 companions, but most are gone now. The warrior's body shudders. She does not understand why at first. By the time she hears the fierce, low sound, the arena is already enclosed in darkness. Looking up, the warrior sees a beast so large that it blots out the sky. She is laughing. She has been doing so for as long as she can remember. Covered in blood and dirt, the warrior laughs. She laughs and laughs until the town that contains her daughter collapses into a pile of dust. This memory has been stored for a long time. It is etched with a single word. Loss. Look at my memory. A red dragon falls from the heavens. <sighs> that memory has been lost. A shame. It was a favourite of mine. The dragon that fell upon Shinjuku. After many centuries of existence, the tree saw that its carefully labelled memories were beginning to dwindle. Just to let you know, the red dragon was actually probably mentioning the dragon from Drake and Guard's E ending. Ugh. Play that game yourself, I don't want to touch it. Once seemingly infinite, the memories now seemed ready to disappear forever. The tree did not feel sadness at this. Grief was an emotion beyond its comprehension. It did, however, had the distinct feeling that something was missing. The mountain of memories it had so carefully assembled had disappeared. The tree stretched its branches as far as it could, but new memories refused to flow. The pool of memories was a black, empty pit. A hollow place where life had once flourished. 
The tree had lost its purpose. There was nothing to be done but sift through the few remaining memories littering the ground under, underneath its branches. This is why the tree was pleased when the man and his companion entered the room. Well, this place is gloomy as hell. The room near had entered was almost completely empty. All he could see were a few crystals scattered haphazard, haphazardly on the ground. Picking up one of the crystals and peering into it, Nier suddenly saw a familiar sight. It was the forest of myth, its villagers prisoners of their own dreams. I apologize, the tree thought. That is all that remains. As Nier stared at the jewel, bewildered, a voice seemingly called out from the depths of his mind. The voice implored them to listen. It was an order. Following it was mandatory. Abruptly, the pair realized that they must listen. They must listen. Look! A small shadowy presence appeared from beneath the floor. It looked to be a shade. The shade grasped several jewels in its hands. More jewels tumbled out of its mouth like shards of broken teeth. Sights and sounds tinkling from each one before vanishing forever. The creature was abusing the memories, treating the precious objects like a collection of cheap playroom toys. The shade appears to be consuming the memories. That little thing is barely worth my time to kill. The tree extended a branch towards Nier. Without a second thought, Nier brought his blade down on the shade, tearing its stomach wide. Jewels burst from the shade and poured across the chamber floor. Look, thought the shay, uh, thought the tree, there is a conviction memory. I thought it lost, and satisfaction, and many others as well. Yes, this is good. The tree opened its mouth and attempted to speak, but no sound emerged. A millennium of silence and solitude had caused the tree to forget certain things. But rather than be upset, it greeted the development with good cheer. Focusing all its power on the riddle of speech, the tree formed a kind of makeshift vocal cord and tried again. <coughs> I implore. <coughs> it spat out a glimmering green jewel. Hmm. One more time. I implore you. There we are. What was the color of lost envy? The color of lost envy was the color of the girl's eyes. Pretty simple. Brown. It spoke! This shade has intelligence! And emotion! Who cares? Nier brushed aside Vice's comment aside as his sword sliced through the shade's right arm. The shade extended its remaining arm to Nier. It- I must touch him. I must make contact. The moment his fingers brushed against Nier, the tree felt a warm sensation begin to burn. Something hot coursed through his fingers, up its arm, and out its entire body. It was emotion, more than in the entity had felt in centuries. The tree cried out in surprise and joy. One thousand years alone, one thousand years in quiet contemplation. The tree felt like it was going to break apart. For long centuries, the tree had been alone. Its heart sealed with heavy chains, but no more. New powerful emotions began to take hold, causing its heart to lighten. This was more than the simple emotions it had designed to feel. It was the beginnings of a soul. And the man was the key. This was the promise made long ago, and this is how it would be released. The tree's stomach began to throb in pain a new and unpleasant sensation. But the time was not yet right. I implore you. How many were lost by the warrior who fought the red-eyed beasts? Her daughter and six, 63 friends. Okay, riddle time is over. I'm gonna kill this stupid shade once and for all. Something round and shiny fell from the open stomach and clattered to the floor. The key, shouted the book. Grab the key! The man's sword slowed. 
time began to dilate around them, stretching and slowing. Time is essential. The next word must be heard. The words exploded. It became difficult to discern the meaning. The pool of memories began to crack as infinite blackness burrowed its way into the wall. Why this world is falling apart? How can a world fall to I implore. Most important thing. World. The light was complete. The memories disappeared. The tree's identity began to dissolve. As the letters slowly faded, Nier was drawn back to the real world. And the tree was satisfied. What in the... I never realized that shades were capable of rational thought. I don't care if they can tap dance or play the fiddle. Can't I just kill something without all this voodoo nonsense? With the tree defeated, we are no longer have to worry about being buried in its world, world of letters. Unless, of course, time re itself begins to rewind. Hmm. And with that, we gain the memory tree key, and that's it. The tree of text is done. And I don't know about you, but let's go check if there's a letter from the younger brother. Maybe the sword is now complete. Fortunately, there are no more side quests to complete other than, well, the one of the berries we just completed. And there's actually a little bit more before we call it quits, so let's go talk to Kaine. You guys solved the mystery yet? Of the berries? No, we got nothing. So, what's with the berries? We picked them up over by that huge tree. I thought maybe... Here, hand them over, I'm starving. Are you mad? Those berries are clearly poisonous. Even one such as you can't hope to. Mmm. The damn, these are delicious. Give me some more. Really? Well, in that case, I suppose I could try one. Uh <laughs> I think Vice was right about those berries. My stomach feels like somebody stuck a sword in there. Hey, what's wrong? You lo Oh, no, no, oh, no! Don't tell me you ate one of those berries! For the love of trees, those things are deadly! Quick, take this antidote before you perish! I thought I was a goner there. What kind of idiot are you? Didn't you see the lumps? Those unusual colors? Why, even a child would know better. Look, I was just trying to... Wait, did you say child? Oh, crap. I bet the kid ate one of these berries. It is quite possible. And if the poison it is... Well, and if the poison it is this painful to an adult, I can only imagine what it would do to a child. Hey, Kaine, did you take the antidote? Don't need it. God, those berries were amazing. The truly amazing thing is that your stomach is fouler than your taste in clothing. If you had genitals, I would chop them off right now. And, well, that's pretty much every grim, grimoire voicing voice. I think speaking all those words in such an emotional tone has basically drained my ability to read. Oh, my mind. I don't think the can of monster... Oh. I still can't feel my arms. Or my legs. I feel fine. You must have a cast iron stomach, Kaine. Oh. Mahasi's internal organs are as filthy as her mouth. Why do you have to be such a shit And with that, that leads to the end of the, well, Forest of Myth. We never have to go back there again, except maybe for a side quest. And that's pretty much it. Considering we passed about 20 minutes worth, I'm not going to cram the next story edition is because there's no more side quests to do other than catch a fish. That's about it. 
So, I'll see you as we get to the junk heap. And we will see you there, Badger recruits. Peace out. Hope you liked all that text.